So welcome to numerical methods. Yeah, we are in the section of random number generation. We started looking at low discrepancy sequences. We have introduced a one dimensional low discrepancy sequence. And now I would like to generalize this to higher dimensions. I would like to have low discrepancy sequences in higher dimensions. Yeah, okay, recall that we already had an algorithm that allows us to generate a higher dimensional sequence out of a lower dimensional sequence. It was this little algorithm here. Okay, this is just a picture. So it was this algorithm that allowed me to create a d-dimensional sequence out of a one-dimensional sequence of RID random variables. And maybe I would like to work a little bit on this And let's see what happens if we do this algorithm for pseudo-random number sequence in one dimension, lifting it, for example, to two dimension, and for a low discrepancy sequence in one dimension, lifting it to two dimensions. So by doing this, I would like to teach you also a little bit programming. Yeah. So of course, I start by defining an interface. So recall in our last session, we implemented here, or we, we defined here this interface, random number generator 1D. Yeah, actually, it was just the definition of a sequence of floating point doubles. So you can ask for the next double. And we implemented the van der Korput sequence. Yeah, so our next double is just taking our index after taking it, incrementing it, and calculate the van der Korput number. Let's do the same now for four sequences in higher dimensions. So let's create an interface. So this is now random number generator. Huh? The other one was called random number generator 1D. And now my random number generator should return a vector. So the next element is just a vector of floating point numbers. Maybe it's handy to also know the size of the vector without calling it for the first time. So the random number generator should report its dimension. So I would like to have sequences implement this interface. Next, let's use this algorithm to generate a sequence of a given dimension. So the next step is I would like to have an implementation that allows me to create a random number generator. So that's actually my name for these general d-dimensional generators from a one-dimensional generator. So this is called maybe a random number generator from random number generator 1D, or you could just say from 1D. So this should implement now my interface. Okay, by selecting that it should implement my interface, this IDE helped me a little bit and told me you have to do the implementation of this method and of this method. Well, my random number generator from 1D has, of course, two properties. The first one is which one-dimensional generator should we use? So let's specify this here. So this is now the random number generator 1D that we would like to use. And the second property is yeah, which dimension is the one that we have specified here. Yeah? So what is the D? Okay, I need a constructor for that. So let him do the work generate a constructor for these two fields. Okay, so now I can pass in a one-dimensional generator and I can pass in the argument. I would like to have that dimension and he should now implement this algorithm here. So first thing I need is I need a, to allocate a small vector. This vector has size dimension. Okay. And then I just need to populate it. 
yeah, the i's value is just populated with the next value of the random number generator. The next up. And then I can return this value. Yeah, the dimension is, of course, just the dimension that has been specified, so I just return the dimension. That's it. So that's now the implementation, very short, of this algorithm that takes a one-dimensional sequence and populates the entries of a d-dimensional, in this picture here, a two-dimensional. Yeah, you see, I have some random number generators here, for example, Mersenne Twister, which implements a one-dimensional generator. Yeah? So I can ask him here, what is the next value of the sequence? I also have this for the Fanta Corporate sequence. So what is the next value of the sequence? So maybe I just use this now to generate a two-dimensional sequence. So I create a small experiment. So let's call this now. Yeah, let's call this now random number generator 2D experiment because I would like to generate a sequence in two dimensions. And my first random number generator. Okay, so that's the interface that we have just created. So the first one is, yeah, say, a 2D generator from a pseudo-random number generator. So which one do we use? We use Mesa and Twister. So I use my new helper class, random number generator from 1D. And inside I now pass Mesa and Twister, say with a given seed. And I would like to have populated two dimensions. Yeah? So this here is two dimensions. So now I have this random number generator in two dimensions, and I would like to plot the sample points. Okay, I need to implement a small method that plots the points. Okay, let me write this here. This is maybe now not such an interesting detail for you. Okay, I have a small plotting function that can plot certain points. So my points is an is a list here, uh, the list of points is a list of uh, these vectors, import list, import array list, and then I would like to plot, say, 1,000 1, such points. So what do I do? Well, I ask my random number generator, please generate the next point. Uh, so this is my generator. Okay, there's generator pseudo here, but I would like to use this method also for other generators later. So let's remove that. You see, this is again implementing against an interface. I just use the interface now. Actually, I do not know how it was created. Okay, so let's take the generator and ask for the next point. Put this point into the list of points. Okay, now the list is completely populated and then just print this, this plot of points. Yeah, so I have a small helper function here that is create scatter plot of a list of such points. I have to be a little bit careful. It's this one here. This is the list of points. The, minimum value for x, the maximum value for x, the minimum value for y, the maximum value for y, and the size of the little dots he's plotting. Okay, I need to import this. Uh, what's wrong here? He also likes to have all the guys being floating point numbers. Okay, this is the floating point number, this is the floating point number, and that one, and that one. Yeah, now he has created the plot. Okay, then I can show this plot. Likes to throw an exception in case that something went wrong. That's now my small toy program. Let's run this experiment. Okay, and you see, hmm, nicely distributed points. 
I can add a small title here. So let's add to the plot the title. Yeah, uh, let's add the name of the generator. So I use generator to string here as a title. So this now tells me, okay, this is a random number generator from 1D, yeah? So that I was using, but actually I don't know which one is inside. If you like to have this, you can modify the two string method of your class that you have implemented here. So a nice little thing is that you can create here a different two string method. And this two string method should, for example, also print which random number generator is used inside and what's the dimension. So if you do this, he will generate this line for you. And if I now run this program again, you see that in the title, he now prints, this is a random number generator from 1D, where we internally use Mers and Twister with this seed, and we blow it up to two dimensions. Now it becomes interesting. Let's try our little experiment with the Funda corporate sequence. Okay, and let me spoil it. It's wrong what we do. Okay, so what we do is we generate a random number generator from 1D. And now I use my Funda corporate sequence. Yeah, so this guy here below. So I use the Funda corporate sequence as the one dimensional sequence. So we use Funda corporate sequence with base two. So this is the base, and I plow, plow it up to two dimensions. Let's now print that one. Okay, and I get here the picture on the right. Yeah, you see, this is random number generator 1D internally using the Funda corporate sequence. So if you don't like to have this long name in the title, you can create a two string method also for the Funda corporate sequence. You could place the index or the base. Yeah, so maybe just the base. Uh, so he now has this as the two string method. And if I now run the experiment again, you see that he now prints quite nicely. Internally, we use a Fanta corporate sequence with space two. Okay, these are the two pictures that we have generated also in the script. This here is the random number generator from 1D that internally uses a Mersen Twister with a certain seed. Looks quite nice, but you see you have this problem that there, there are some regions that are not very well filled yeah, with the discrepancies. Other regions have maybe too many points, yeah, like here. But now if you use a low discrepancy sequence, a one-dimensional one, so I use my random number generator from 1D, but internally I use, and that's a mistake, a Funda corporate sequence, I get this result. Okay, the problem is that when you do this algorithm, the assumption is that the elements are IID. They are independent. Yeah? So the next drawing is independent from the previous one. The next random variable is independent from the previous one. So the components are independent. Yeah? I have a sequence with IID components. And this is, of course, not fulfilled with the Fanta corporate sequence. Your Fanta corporate sequence is, yeah, how does it start? One half, one over four. Yeah, then one half plus one over four, three over four. Okay, then the next one is the one over eight. So it is one over eight. One half plus one over eight. A five over eight, and so on. Yeah. And you now see that what he is doing is he is using two such values and creating a point. So this here is actually the point. You see this here is one half, yeah, but also note here, this here is 0 0.52, yeah, so I'm already zoomed a little bit in here. Yeah. This is the point one half, 
1 over 4. And your next point is, okay, 3 over 4, 1 over 8. So the next point is this guy, 3 over 4, 1 over 8. Yeah, you can easily see that uh, actually that we have a lot of structure in this sequence and naively doing this, fill the components with this quasi-random number G sequence creates uh, trash. So if you do Monte Carlo integration with this sequence here, you don't get a reasonable result, of course. So I need a specific low discrepancy sequence for the dimension. So I need low discrepancy sequences in a specific dimension. And one example I have here is the Horton sequence. Yeah, and the Horton sequence is still related to the Van der Korput sequence. Actually, it is, to some extent, a Van der Korput sequence. But what you do is you use individual Van der Korput sequences for each dimension, where the base of each sequence is different, and the bases are co-prime. Yeah? So my bases are now such that B1 to BD are different basis values for the van der Korput sequence, such that bj and bk have k greatest common divisor one, so they are co-prime, yeah, if they are different. And then this sequence xi, where each component, yeah, so xij, the j's component of xi, is a van der Korput sequence with base bj. So this sequence is called Horton sequence. So the Horton sequence is just a collection of van der Korput sequences where we have different base values. Let's implement this quickly. So I now implement here a new class. This is now called Horton sequence, and this is not a random number sequence from 1D, so this is just a random number generator, so I have to implement it from scratch with a certain dimension. So what uh, input fields do I need? Yeah, I need the value of the basis. So base, yeah, or well, basis is now um, an array, so actually, I do not need to know the dimension because the size of this array already tells me the dimension. Yeah, let's generate a constructor. Okay, and now what I do here is very similar to what we have done here in this random number generator from 1D. We populate a vector, so maybe I just copy that. A little bit lazy here. I just copy this. We populate a vector of the corresponding dimension. The dimension is now just the size of the space. Okay. Yeah, but I don't fill it now with my one dimension random number generator. I fill it with the corresponding van der Korput number. So here I can ask now my van der Korput sequence, give me the van der Korput number for my current index and the base i. Okay, so what's my current index? So this we do in the same way as we did for the van der Korput sequence. So I have an atomic integer or an atomic long, if you like, that keeps track of the index. So this is my current index. So I initialize this index to zero. So actually in the code, if you look in the repository, I always use atomic long, yeah, so that we can have much larger values for the index. It can have very, very long sequences. So here I have this index, yeah, but note that all these guys should use the same index, yeah. So I cannot increment this index here, so I do this here. So here I get the index and 
I increment it. Then I can pass it to the funder component. Yeah, I hope this is right. Yeah, the dimension is just the length of the base. I return this here. I, I hope it's right. The implementation in the repository is maybe a little bit different. So now we have a Horton sequence. Let's add this to our experiment. So I have my generator quasi random, but now I don't use the Funder Corpus sequence. I just use my Horton sequence. Well, with a certain base value. So I need to create an array now of base values. It should be co-primes. So let's take two and three. And let's plot this. Okay, so this is my Horton sequence. This is the Van der Korput sequence to populate the guys and the Mersenne Twister. Yeah, maybe I make the title a little bit nicer here. So let's go to our Horton sequence, generate a two-string method. A two-string method that maybe also prints me the base array. Okay, so it prints me the base array. Let's run this program again. Okay, and you see, now I have a quasi-random number generator in two dimensions. Yeah? And this looks quite nicely distributed. Yeah, actually, it looks better than my pseudo-random number generator yeah, used to sample the two-dimensional sample. So that is the Horton sequence. This is the code in the script, just the same code as the Van der Korput sequence. You should maybe do some tests, yeah, that the base vector is not chosen in, yeah, say, a forbidden way. Yeah, maybe you can play with this. If you go here to the program, the bases should be co-prime. If you use now, for example, base two and four, Okay, then you get this result. Yeah. Okay, this is not what we would like to have. Yeah. So this is Horton sequence with base two and four. This is the coding session we just did. The random number generator 2D experiment that plots, creates these three plots. Okay. So the 2D one with the mass N, the 2D one with the Van der Korput, uh, which gives the wrong result, and the 2D one with the Horton. The Horton sequence has a star discrepancy of log n to the power of d divided by n. Yeah? So you see, consistent with the Van der Korput sequence, log n to the power of 1 divided by n. So it becomes worse if the dimension increases. So you see that the quasi Monte Carlo method still has some dependency on the dimension, depending here on which sequence you use. Yeah? Actually, one can prove that you always get something like this, the log n to the power of d. Yeah? So you can prove the optimal um, value for the low discrepancy sequence. And this means that Monte Carlo may still have an edge. Also note that these convergence rates are just orders. Yeah? Order 1 divided by square root of n, order log n to the power of d divided by n. But in a practical application, so if you now implement this algorithm and use it in the industry, yeah, you often have to choose a fixed value of n yeah, because also n is maybe limited by the time that is consumed to perform the computation. So how does now these two rates, so I have, for example, here the rate for the quasi Monte Carlo method, my Horton sequence, the log n to the power of d divided by n. How does this actually compare to our classical Monte Carlo method that has a one divided by square root of n. Well, for a practical choice of n means if you choose, for example, n to be 10 million, yeah? 
10 to the power of 7. Okay, so what you compare is the Horton sequence convergence rate, log n to the power of d, should be smaller than the Monte Carlo one. So log n to the power of d divided by n should be less or equal 1 divided by square root of n. Now, for which dimension is this the case? You can just multiply with an n. Okay, with if you multiply with an n, you have log n to the power of d should be smaller than square root of n. Then you can just take the logarithm again. Yeah? So you have d times log log n should be smaller than log of square root of n, which is one half log n. Yeah, divide by the log log n, and you get this bound here. One half log n divided by log log n, you get this bound for the dimension d. So if you take now the logarithm to a log 10, yeah, otherwise this would be just a constant factor, then you have that log n for n equals 10 to the power of 7 is a 7. Yeah? So it is 7 divided by log 7. So this is 7 divided by 0 0.8, 1 half. Actually, the result is 4.1 something. So you have that your dimension should be smaller than 4. Point something in order to have that the Horton sequence yeah, has a better constant yeah, there than the classical Monte Carlo method. Well, this is a bit yeah, fuzzy here yeah, because all these are just orders and you have to check the constant that is in front. So this means if the dimension is much larger than four, yeah, if you use a fixed number of sample paths, maybe the classical Monte Carlo is still better. Okay, so this rough calculation shows you that Monte Carlo still would perform better if you consider fixed value um, of ends, yeah, generating the points uh, randomly. To conclude, very popular Sobol numbers is yeah, another famous low discrepancy sequences. So you know, might uh, look this up yeah, and there are libraries that generate the Sobol.